Josh Rubin from East West Selling Improvements. Today I want to talk to you about calcium. There's so many people with osteoporosis taking calcium. And first of all, the calcium they're taking is just crap. Most of it is from dolomite or oyster shells. It contains high amounts of lead. Most people have stomach issues, small intestine issues, liver issues, and they can't even absorb what they're taking in. But the problem is it's not the calcium that's causing the osteoporosis. Or it's not the calcium that's showing up as a low on the blood levels or urine levels that's a problem. It's actually getting to the root of the issue. What is causing the low calcium levels? So let's look at some of the reasons that are causing low calcium levels in the body so we can come to the conclusion of understanding why or what happens in the body when calcium levels get low and maybe some minor things that you can do to help bring, the, bring these things back up. Because if you don't get rid of the very thing that's causing the problem, well, the problem's not going to go away. And you're not, you don't have osteoporosis or deficiency in calcium because you're deficient in calcium. I know that be, might be hard for you to wrap your head around, but when you listen to this, you might begin to understand and help yourself and get off the calcium to actually look at the root of the issue so your body can actually absorb the calcium that you're taking in. Well, there's three things that actually cause the body to lose excess calcium in the urine. The first one is a diuretic. Diuretics, a lot of people are on medications. I'm not telling you to go off them. They're on them for health reasons, but diuretics actually cause the body to release excess calcium in the urine. A high refined salt diet, this is your bleach white table salt. This actually puts the body in, into systemic acidosis, basically too acidic, systemically, whole body. So what happens is the body actually loses calcium through the urine to buffer the system. A diet that's high in sulfur-containing compounds, this is a diet that's high in conventional grains or conventional meats that are fed conventional grains. Or even farm-raised fish nowadays are fed conventional grains. Or even farm-raised fish in the ocean and pens are fed conventional grains. So if you're eating a diet that's high in sulfur-containing compounds, this actually causes blood or urine um, to be lost, I'm sorry, calcium to be lost in the urine and blood, which actually will show up low calcium levels, which isn't really the problem. It's the foods that you're eating. There's other things in the body that will actually cause cal low calcium levels. The first is an HCL deficiency, um, which is a hydrochloric acid deficiency in the stomach. And I've talked about this numerous times. It could be inflammation, bacterial infection. It could be chronic stress, on and on and on. It could be a, being on a proton pump inhibitor like Nexium. All these things decrease hydrochloric acid production in the stomach. And you need this to break down proteins and other things so you can start absorbing calcium. But at the same time, when that acidity in the stomach goes into the small intestine, that signals the small intestine, the pancreas, and the liver to release other enzymes and bile to break down these nutrients so you can absorb them. So that goes into the liver as well. So if you have a deficiency in any of those, small intestine, stomach, liver, pancreas, you actually have low levels of calcium in the body. So it doesn't matter how much calcium you take, it's the hydrochloric acid deficiency that's causing the low calcium levels. It's a liver insufficiency, not producing enough bile. It's a pancreatic insufficiency, not producing, uh, producing enough pancreatic enzymes. It's a small intestine issues, whether it's villous atrophy, so you can't absorb all your food. It could be a parasite infection, a bacterial infection, just a pH imbalance in the entire system. The bottom line is you're not going to absorb the calcium from the foods that you're eating, and you're not going to absorb the calcium from the calcium that you're taking in. So it makes no sense to actually take the calcium. Save your money because all you're doing is actually hurting the system, and you're producing expensive poop. So get rid of the calcium that you're taking. Not your medications, though. I'm not telling you to go off your diuretics. So what happens... Now, we've looked at some of the causes. These are the roots of the issue. Now, it's obviously individualized for the person. Not everyone's going to have all these, right? But it's individualized. That's why. That's what holistic, uh, holistic health is. It's really looking at the whole person to figure out maybe why they have low calcium levels because everyone's going to have them for a different reason. Well, let's look at what happens normally in the body just so you understand the, the physiology of what happens when you have low calcium levels from any of the things I just talked about. Not from having low calcium, but from having something from what we just talked about, like low HCL, a liver issue, from being on medications, being on Nexium, a high salt diet, being systemically acidosis. Well, the first thing is when blood levels of calcium drop, you, your body or your endocrine system releases parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone actually stimulates osteoclasts, which actually break bone down, right? Break bone down, osteoporosis. And they do this to demineralize bone to increase calcium in the blood. At the same time, they limit calcium excretion in the urine. So they do this to try to protect the body. But if over time you're still not getting to the root of the issue, you'll still just release, you'll still just push calcium out of the body because of the systemic acidosis. The body's always trying to protect itself. At the same time, vitamin D is very important when it comes to calcium. So a lot of people are taking calcium, and without actually vitamin D, you can't even absorb it or break it down. But the thing is, it's really not vitamin D, it's vitamin D from the sun. When we get vitamin D from the sun, the body actually stores in the liver as cholecalciferol. Now this is the inactive form of vitamin D. So when calcium levels drop, 
the body or the liver will actually release this inactive form and the kidneys convert it into calcitriol. This is the active form of vitamin D. And this, the body does this to actually increase levels of calcium but increase calcium absorption in the small intestine. But if you have a small intestine issue of any kind, whether it's a pathogen, malabsorptive issues, dysbiosis, leaky gut, a pancreatic issue, a liver issue, then everything's going to go haywire. You're actually not going to increase calcium absorption in the small intestine because the small intestine is actually dysfunctional. So when all this regulates, let's say it just regulates, the body says, okay, well, calcium levels are actually restored. So the thyroid releases uh, calcitonin, and this actually downregulates parathyroid hormone, so you actually stop producing it to stop demineralizing bone. So if you don't bring calcium levels back up, and this is not by taking calcium levels, the body's going to keep breaking down um, uh, bone. It's going to keep demineralizing bone. It's going to keep um, using up the vitamin D that you have, if you have any. And it's just an ongoing process. So your body is actually never going to release the calcitonin to downregulate the osteoclast. You're going to keep demineralizing bone. And you're going to keep pushing calcium out of the body. So you really have to get to the root of the issue in this because if you don't, you're always going to have low calcium levels. Now, what do you do? The first thing is stop taking your calcium. Most of it's toxic. Most of it is not going to increase calcium levels in the blood or in the urine. Trust me. It might show high levels in the urine or the blood when you get your lab test, but go off it. Because you haven't fixed that internal physiological pathway that I just talked about, that orchestra, go off the calcium, do a blood test two weeks, month later, and you'll see your calcium levels just low again. We see it all the time. Same thing with vitamin D. What do you do? You have to review the meds that you're on. Because if the meds that you're taking actually are causing a calcium insufficiency, then that could be the reason. It's not the calcium insufficiency that's the problem. It's the medications you're on. Now, I'm not telling you to go off them. Just review them to see if the medications you're taking could be actually causing inflammation causing low calcium levels and causing your osteoporosis. Second thing is reduce your high salt intake diet. This is your refined white table salt. Use Celtic sea salt. This is not a bleach salt. It doesn't affect the reading and angiotensin system in the body. It doesn't cause high blood pressure. It actually balances out um, the sodium and potassium pump in the body. It actually can lower blood pressure. Feed the body minerals. On and on and on. So you want to stop that because if you're taking the refined calcium, um, the refined salt in your foods all the time, whether you put it on your foods or you're eating conventional processed food with lots of preservatives, this actually puts your body into systemic acidosis, which continually causes your body to leach calcium through your urine. So it doesn't matter how much calcium you take. Third is, look at the foods that you're eating. Most people are eating conventional foods, chicken, meats, anything you want to say, a protein, anything with eyes, right? And they're eating conventional grains, anything that's box wrapped, box wrapped canned, most of these contain sulfur-containing compounds. And then it actually puts the body into systemic acidosis, which basically causes the body, once again, to leach calcium from the body. And they're mostly void of nutrients. So take a look at your diet. Go to our website at eastwesthealing.com. Go to the resources page. Go to the articles page. There's hundreds of articles and resources for you to learn about what you need to do to start eating food from Mother Earth that's living, that's not full of these grains. You know, chickens are not meant to eat corn. Cows are not meant to eat grown corn. If when cows eat corn, this actually puts them into systemic acidosis, and they live for three to six months. That's why they have to kill them. So if you're eating something that's acidic, like from systemic acidosis, you might become acidic at the same time. So look at the foods that you're eating and start eating high-quality organic foods that are not fed grains, that are fed the foods that they're supposed to eat. Other thing you want to look at is the liver. You want to look at if you should if they have a liver insufficiency, liver stasis. You can do this by blood test. You can do this by uh, a GI test as well. But you want to look at the liver and possibly do, use some liver support supplements, possibly do a liver cleanse, because if the liver is stagnant and you're not releasing enough bile, you're not going to absorb enough calcium, so you're going to end up showing low calcium levels. Last thing you want to do is look at the gut. Now, you can do this from a GI panel, but at the same time, you can watch our clips on the 4-Hour Gut Healing Program. A lot of people have stomach, liver gallbladder insufficiencies, small intestine problems, pancreatic insufficiencies, like I talked about. So if you don't fix these issues and get to the root of the problem, you're always going to show up with low calcium levels. It actually doesn't matter how much calcium you take. You're still going to show up low because you can't absorb it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this clip. I'm out of here. It was pretty long, and I'm confused.